not. Let's just go live know. and see and see what happens. I think that it might just, yeah, there we go. Hey, All what right. is up, guys? Welcome to the Fix This, Build That Sunday Night Live Show. I'm Brad. And I'm Susan. And we have puzzle boxes. We have puzzle um, boxes. Yeah, we have, we have the puzzle boxes. So video, we're just talking to our folks over here. Just launched the new video on the Impossible Dovetail cutting board. I've got a whole set of them right here. Again, Instagram folks, sorry you can't see this. But uh, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about these today and show what's been going on because, man, that was awesome. First of all, let's, let's address the elephant in the room. Titans. Do we have to? Yeah, I don't know. The we Titans. Just not talk about it. All right. Yeah. I know everybody's like Titans, so you can just go ahead and get yeah. it all out of your system for all you. Uh, I've already seen you know, people comment about how the Packers, or Packers fans won or, or and, whoever. Yeah. Uh, you can get it out of your system. We yeah, lost today. We did. It was ugly. Uh, King Henry just did not get going. Mm -hmm. That was a big shame. And so you know, whatever. Like if we, if we can't get our yeah, running back right. going, I mean, so they played a good year. game. Yeah. They played a good game. And uh, Lamar Jackson, they had that one play that turned the whole game around where it was third and long and he ran it for a touchdown. There you go. So we stop him there and it's a totally different game, but we didn't. Yeah. Uh, Lamar Jackson is awesome. That's why he's MVP. And so there you go. Yeah. Uh, so, but we did just release the video on the, uh, the different cutting boards. And, and so if you've not seen the video yet, I'm not going to spoil the total thing. So I'm not going to do it uh, because I know <laughs> some of you haven't watched the video yet, but here is one of the boards. I will show this one. This was, I, I did several prototypes. So this was the first one here which was a sliding dovetail board. I will mm -hmm. show that one off here in just a minute. Uh, and then we did the, um, the impossible cube. So you see four uh, dovetail joints all mm -hmm. around there, which uh, obviously looks like you can't assemble it. And then the uh, coup de gras, the as coup they de say. Gras. I feel like that could be a Jeopardy question. Is, oh, look at that thing. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Hey, what's up, Zoe? Uh, this, I mean, this turned out quite honestly, this turned out better than I even imagined it would have, <laughs> which is surprising, uh, cause typically it goes the other way, but, uh, very, very excited about that build and had a lot of fun with it. But, um, this is one that I did build though. That was the, um, so if you watch the video, you'll see me kind of stepping through the whole process mm -hmm. and figuring out along the way. And the first thing I wanted to do was figure out if I could even do a sliding dovetail. Right. So this is one, and uh, this is cherry and walnut, and whoop, there it goes right there. So uh, yeah, that works. It actually has a magnet on it so that it locks. Let's see if we can get a nice little locking. Boom. So it just kind of snaps in there. Satisfying. It is. I wish it made that sound, <laughs> but it doesn't. Uh, and and it, that was just to see if I could do the sliding dovetail, like I said. Then I stepped into the smaller guy, and again, I'm not going to open this up because uh, it was interesting. I did a poll. I don't think I told you about this. Oh. I did a poll on Instagram and I, I said, how many people know how this works? And, um, you know, don't spoil it if you're in the, if you're in the comments. Right. Um, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy or girl. Or girl, I was to say. Yeah. Uh, I, to see how many. And it was about half and half. It was like almost exactly 50-50 huh. where I said, hey, do you know how this works? Yes or no. Yeah. And uh, so there's the small guy. And obviously there is a trick to this. So it is a solid top and a solid bottom. So there's a trick on how that is assembled and then with the final cutting board. So if you guys have not seen it, maybe I'll show it at the end, maybe. But I'm only gonna show it on YouTube, by the way. So if you're not on YouTube, you're not gonna see it. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if folks have not seen it, or if folks wanna hear about mm -hmm. it or see it at the YouTube, we'll do that later for you guys. At the YouTube. At the YouTubes, at the tubes, as I like tubes. to say. Uh, I never say that, but. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. But before we jump mm -hmm. into anything else, uh, we do want to thank some new members. We had a bunch of people join this week, we did. Uh, which was fantastic. So we had a lot of new people that joined the Builders Club. Uh, we had David Coolidge, Jason Carlson, Tyson, Jeremy Chester, Greg Barneycastle, John Tate, Muhammad Fazil, Clyde Mariano, and Dirty Bay Woodshop. Right. Full mm -hmm. house. Welcome. So welcome, welcome. Uh, welcome to everybody there. And uh, if you're not familiar with what the Builders Club is, it's basically the inner circle here of the Fix This Build That audience where they get uh, weekly updates, they get early access to the video. I, I put, put this video out like 10 p.m. last night to them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when we finish it early, they get it even more early. But right. yeah, they got it yesterday, last night. Uh, free plans, mentions in the lives, as well as credits at the end of the actual videos that we put up on YouTube on the main channel. So thank you to all those who have joined. If you want some more information, you can head over to uh, fixthisbuildthat.com forward slash builders club and check it out. But yeah, that, um, 
I tell you what, like this, this one was, it took a while. Right. It was a journey. A journey of the ages. <laughs> It's a journey of 2021. Yes. It's like uh, the first project of 2021. It was. It was the first project of 2021. It was supposed to be the last project of 2020. No. But it, it, it <laughs> didn't. But uh, yeah, but we worked through it and it was all good. Yeah. So but let's see who we have here. Um, well, let's go back over to our yeah. to our folks here. Uh, who do we have over here on, um, over on, here? on the, the things? Let's the tubes. Who do we have? We got Keith, we got Nailbender, mm -hmm. Travis, what's up, man? Elliot, Aggie fan. Teresa, what's up? It's been a while. Hey, Teresa. Uh, Brian, cool, cool. Uh, yep. Let's see, we got Barrio. <laughs> what's up, Barrio? Um, Woodworks, we've got, um, who else do we have over here on the Instagram? We've got um, Roshner, see, I think there. Bates Hoffman, what's up, Nolan Bill? What's up, Nolan? Luke in the Garage, um, Ronaldo and Old Navy 1984. All right. Kevin, Adrian. Yeah. We got a bunch of folks over here. Scott's Excellent. here. And Scott, what's up, Scott? Scott, I don't know if you saw the comment. Somebody said the music was epic. Music was epic. I was like, oh, yeah. yeah, it was. Crushed it, Scott. It was awesome. Scott finally figured me out. <laughs> indie pop, Scott understands apparently. Brad better than anyone else Indie now. pop. Lloyd Dusick, what's up, Lloyd? <laughs> Who would have thought indie pop? I, I, really I probably not would have. I probably would have not. Uh, but it was like every single song that he played. I was like, "This is great! I love it! I, I love know! It. I love it!" They so were all awesome. uh, this coming week, we are we're going to be doing. We're definitely jumping into a lot of cleanup this week because we kind of came burning and screaming into the end of the year. Uh, we have some tax stuff and <laughs> things. Screaming and burning. Into screaming the and burning. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it was that dramatic. It sounds better that way, though. I mean, okay. Might be a title, Screaming and Burning into the screaming End of the Year. Screaming and Burning, I don't know. I feel like the whole country came screaming and burning. Yeah, but... no doubt. I think, yeah, 2021 didn't save us either. No. But, um, <laughs> I saw something online there was like, um, oh gosh, like a, a meme, like like you had your first seven-day trial. Yeah, trial period. It's like, like, I'll turn it back in. Yeah, yeah exactly. I saw that one too. Like, yes. Uh, <laughs> so this week, uh, quite honestly, I, I don't know what the next project is. Mm -hmm. I know that... so. And what I meant by that really is the shop, the, the status uh, well, of the shop. That, uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, so my next project, and kind of I don't know if I'm going to have a video on it or not, uh, it may be the shop tour as I uh, reconfigure the shop because we had some, we got some new tools in and yep. we have <clears throat> some old tools that, not tools, we have some old um, workstations and things that need to go. I've got a big lumber rack that's sitting right over here. I've got the wood rack that we built, that we used at the beginning of the build, and those all kind of have to go. Uh, all right, but before we jump into anything else, we're going to do beer of the week. Boop, 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 beer of the week. I was ready to like. If go. anybody is a jingler, like if you, <clears throat> is that a thing? Like jingler, jingler? if you write jingles. <laughs> I don't think they if call themselves If somebody wants to jinglers. do a, do a beer of the bad. week jingle for us, that would be awesome. Yeah. Beer, oops, they be called, sorry. Though, but yeah. beer of the week. Beer of the week. This week is um, <clears throat> East Pass IPA. East Pass. From Destin Brewery. <clears throat> Uh, and I wonder me. if that's the. Um, I wonder if that's the bridge that we go over. I wonder if it is. East Pass. That uh, makes sense. We have been known to vacation in Destin. Uh, yeah. This is from Destin area yeah. as well. That's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's my, from my man Rick Reader from uh, Thanks, Rick. Panhandle Woodworks. So thank you so much, Rick. Yeah. And uh, we'll have to get this in the next time we're down there. I know. Yeah. I wonder where that brewery is. I mean, I'm assuming it's in Destin, Ooh, but I've never it's seen nice. it on the travel set. It's, it's not bitey. Ooh, it's bitey. It's like not a very hoppy. Yeah, it's like a very kind of. Mild, just good drinking. Ooh, yeah, that's good. I like good. that. I like that. That's good. Thank you, Rick. That's kind of like that's a fantastic. hazy. I like it. All right, cool. <clears throat> Let us jump Thank in you. and see some <laughs> Paul Diet Dew Lager. We should we should have that next. <laughs> the beer of the week is uh, Diet Dew Lager. Oh, jeez. Um, I can only imagine. Let's see here. Greetings from Brunei. What's up? What's up? Ooh, we got. Wow. I think that's the first <laughs> time we've ever had Brunei yeah, in the, in the play the in the house. Uh, <laughs> the Medford Maker, what's up? Am I going to release patches with the logo? We'll oh, love to add uh, to a jacket of uh, oh, this. you know I have this That's patch. Cool. We've never done patches. We haven't. No. We could broaden our horizons. We could. It's not on the short list, but that would be kind of fun. You're the first request we've had, I think. Uh, Meticulous so. Visions, thank you. I'm glad you're glad you're digging the new video. Right. Awesome, awesome. Okay, let's see here. Who else we have over here? Uh, oh, I think we already had those. <laughs> uncle, my uncle named me Bear. Oh, okay. All right. I, I like that. <laughs> uh, all right. Brunei is a small country surrounded by Malaysia. Yeah. Oh, there you go. And Karim DLC. Okay. Awesome. Cool. That makes sense. They're kind of like over there by Australia. We get a lot of Australians. Yeah. And like in yeah. the same general region of the globe. I'm not saying it's super close. Yeah, all that. Okay. Let's mm -hmm. see here. Uh, I'm, I'm answering some questions up here. Keith, 
Um, would it be, well, sorry, sorry, Brad, would that dovetail board be possible without a CNC? So Keith, hmm, great question. A good question. So Keith over on YouTube asked about if I can make the board and just so I'll bring it back out here just so we can take another look at it because- We're asking this question in the comments amazing. on YouTube as well. Were they? I saw somebody I say something about it. So could this board be made without <laughs> the CNC? Because I know not everybody has the CNC, I get that. Um, and I understand and yep. I didn't have a CNC for a long time, a uh, very long time. And yes, you could make this without a CNC. It would be um, difficult. more difficult. The fine tuning, I think, would be more, the most difficult. But I actually had a friend who I'll, I'll uh, leave their identity secret so they don't spoil anything in case they do something. But uh, who DM'd me after I had put this out and was like, I can't believe you just did that. That was on my list of projects. Really? I was going to do that soon. Oh, and, that um, stinks. And so it was really funny. But uh, oh they said they were going to actually use a router template and do it with oh, a router because wow. they don't have a CNC. They could still do that. That's what I said. Yeah. And, and so, yes, you could <laughs> do it with router template. I think, again, the fine tuning would be the hardest part, I believe. Yeah. Um, because to get it really, really precise, and that's what I wanted. And I'll do a, a little close up, uh, and I, it probably won't focus very, very well on those. But you can see that the see. the angles on these um, are, but the the joints are super super tight. Like I was really impressed with <laughs> how well the CNC was able to do it. Um, yeah. I mean they are really really tight on most sides. There's there's small 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 gaps which are are hidden by the walnut. <clears throat> I think that would be really hard to recreate uh, with a router, honestly. Yeah. Um, but with enough time, you you could do it. It took a lot of fine tuning. Yes, it did. It did take, sure. some, take some fine tuning. So and patience. I feel like this was a project where, um, you know, some of the things that you build, you have a plan, or you, you know, you design a plan, and you might change it a little bit along the way if you need to, but you pretty much know what you're doing, and you come out here and you just get it done. And this was one where I was like, oh, okay, first just a bunch of like testers, and then another tester board, and then another tester. And then I was doing the testing, man. And then it was like time for the real one, but let's do something similar on like different. Oh line, yeah, yeah. Because right? I did like, a lot of tests. I did a lot of tests and scrap <clears throat> before even these. So there was a lot of prototyping, a lot yeah. of work to go into it because like figuring things out. Well, because it was because these boards are ingrained boards, and right. you guys know that those are not fun or easy to make. So I didn't. I mean, they're not hard, but they're um, just not fun or easy. Um, well, when I say they're not hard. And they're not easy, not uh, not quick. Let me say that. Ingrain boards are pretty easy to make. They just take time, and uh, so I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of time right. redoing it and having to do all those glue ups and milling and double glue ups and all that good stuff. So, so there yep. you go. Uh, let's see here. Who else we have over on uh, the Instagrams? Uh, Medford Maker. We will. We will let you know, man. You you just keep being on there. Uh, how, he's got Deresta Claggett. Wait, Maleki? Maleki has a badge. What? Come on. Does Malecki, Malecki really have a badge? I'm not surprised. I feel like Malecki would have a badge. Derek from Malden. Love Derek. Huh. He's a good dude. Woodgrain315, what's up? We got Riders Custom Creations, TL Woodworks. Mm -hmm. What's up? Oh, is that? That's Travis, I believe. Um, hmm. And uh, let's see here. Love your work. Who is that? No, Noventi6. The board is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Southern Mountain Woodwork. Might be cool to explore wooden puzzles. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I've really actually cool. been, that's part of what, what got me to do this. Mm -hmm. So I've been watching a lot of puzzle box videos in the last year or so. Uh, Chris Ramsey's one of my favorite channels and we watch it with the kids. Uh, yep. we, we love seeing him figure out these puzzle boxes. He's really gotten into these like crazy <laughs> ones lately, but, um, you know, used to, eat, and he still does some that are like more simple wooden ones. And that's definitely on my plan <clears throat> is to eventually make a puzzle box. I mean, this is technically it a puzzle. It kind of is, yeah. I mean, you have to it's figure out It's a puzzle. It it's works. not a puzzle box, but yeah. it's got it's a trick to like it. Right? A, it's a one-move puzzle. It's, it's just a cool, like a... cool, like, ooh, wow, it's a good, so awesome. It's a great conversation piece. Yes. So, um, so oh, we got uh, Victor. Victor Cisneros. What's up, my man? Uh, I'm looking forward to that as well. He offered to make a uh, in-green cutting board with our logo in it. Wow. I know. I'm super, Fancy. I'm super pumped about that. That's awesome. Two Rockets 2608. Uh, it does come apart. It does. Watch I'm not going to spoil it because I know a lot of people haven't watched the video yet. Right. It just came out this morning. You should, and actually, Berkey Boland Percussion said, sorry, I'm late. I was actually watching your new video. Ah, I I said, that is a great reason, reason to be late. Bark. Yes. Um, how much time would it take for a newbie to learn how to use the X-Carve? D. Barker. Mm. 
That's a great question uh, because I, I've got that after that video came out and some other things um, that I've done on it is that uh, learning the X carve, I th that's one of the reasons why I chose that one is because learning on the X carve is very fast. As far as like putting it together takes a while, it's take you eight plus hours probably to put it together. Uh, but once you get up and running, the software they use, you like you can start designing right out the gate. Mm -hmm. Like boom, they make it. It's a web-based product. You don't have to get any subscriptions or anything. Um, you can do different shapes and stuff, and there's different projects you can download. They make it very very easy to get started. Uh, so once you learn, so like I just started getting into Fusion 360, mm -hmm. which is like next level. Um, like 3D carving instead of like if but if you just wanted to like uh, you know CNC out a name or like recess a mm -hmm. name into something or cut out a shape um, like a some brackets or something for dust collection or whatever uh, you can get going like really really fast that's one of the things I really love about the X carve yeah ah, I love it what else yeah. do we have over here um well, people just saying hi, talking about patches. Just saying hi. All right. I don't All know, right. hanging well, out. I got it. Um, let's see here. Who else we have over here on um, the YouTube's? Make Chris Ramsey a box. I yes, I would love to make Chris a box. That would be really fun. Mm -hmm. Wooden fire designs. What's up? Uh, the beginnings of a winter beard. A wooden fire. Yes, you are seeing the beginnings <laughs> of a winter beard. I was just talking pandemic. to Susan about it. And I was like, I'm just going to let it go. It's, it's, the, it's not just the winter beard. Oh this might gosh. be scary. He's going full out. I mean, so this is like the whole winter hair. The whole thing, Like the whole, the whole thing. Um, I mean, yeah. I look like a hot mess. <laughs> My hair is like super long up top. Um, He's got curly hair too, so it's got a lot of it's, movement to it. I know. It. It's going gonna, it's gonna it to start flips. getting crazy. Love it. Uh, Mac Harris just watched the Mobile Meyer Station retirement video. <laughs> Glad you love that, man. Uh, building landing next. Any, oh, that's a good uh, JF woodworking and design. Um, just put up a second YouTube video in about building trout sized landing nets. First of all, that sounds awesome. What? I'm sorry, what? It's what? Trout sized landing nets. I'm assuming it's a wooden um, fishing net. trout, like the fish oh. landing net, you pull them in. Sure. Um, and that's awesome. So any advice for beginner YouTubers? I'm gonna give you um, my best advice and they, they've changed. I'll give you two channels that I think are really, really good for beginners. Um, Think Media is the YouTube channel Think Media, and the other one is Video Creators. Uh, Video Creators with Tim Schmoyer has started to go away from beginner stuff, but they have a whole library of beginner of beginner content. Um, and actually, I would highly, highly, highly recommend uh, Tim Schmoyer's 30 Days to a Better YouTube Channel. That is a course. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a paid course. It's excellent. Um, I, I went through it and. Uh, I've gotten to know Tim through the course of he was on uh, Made for Profit, and we've we've been kind of going back and forth and, and struck up a little bit of a friendship here. And he is a great guy and really knows his stuff. I would highly recommend that course. Uh, it would be a great investment. I think it's 99 bucks, um, but well worth the money. And um, 30 days to a better YouTube channel. Search that on, um, on YouTube and you'll, you'll find it or video creators. So go check those two out. Uh, those are my top picks for new beginners. Yeah. Um, okay. Versus old beginners. <laughs> yes. Um, Willem, Wallum, yeah, Wallum he has Lake. a 3D printer. How similar is that to a CNC machine? And yeah, also, so, yeah. Go ahead, you interesting that. question <laughs> because um, I know a lot of people are like, ah, it's like same thing, right? Like your, your computer designing, but, but no. the interesting thing is 3D printers are additive by nature and CNC machines are subtractive by nature. So you start right. with a block <laughs> and then you carve out what you want with a CNC and you start with a spool of filament and then you Build extrude up. it into yeah. what you want with a 3D printer. Mm -hmm. So Extrude. Extrude, yeah. Nice job, babe. Um, they're similar in the fact that you can model, you can model them both. Like, so for Fusion 360, you could use, like I could model, let's just say this right here, this is a great example. Um, I could model this in Fusion 360, and I did. <laughs> <laughs> and if I wanted to, so this is two pieces. If I wanted to um, CNC it, I would do. I would have to make tool paths around it and say like, and let let Fusion know, um, or let any kind of software know. Like, here's what I'm starting with, and here's what I want it to be at the end. And so it, 
you know, if it's, if it's taller, then it knows it's got to take off the top or take off the side, but it knows the final dimensions. And I probably have to switch. So I did, if you watch the video, I switched uh, cutting bits, router bits in the router. So I had a straight bit. I also had a dovetail bit and I had a surfacing bit. So I've got to do a bunch of different uh, things to get this exactly how I want it. 3D printer, on the other hand, is just like, okay, here's what I want and I shape it. And then it can print any angle. You might have to have mm -hmm. supports, but it can print anything you want. So um, there's kind of no limitations. There are some limitations, but you know, if I wanted to model this can and print it, then I would just model it. And the interesting thing about 3D printing is you can have hollow forms, mm -hmm. which you can't do on a CNC. Um, like I could literally um, make this can and make it be hollow inside, but sealed on the outside. You obviously can't do that on a CNC. It's so crazy. Yeah, so it's, you know, they're just made for different things. And obviously CNC, you know, mostly with wood and light metal, like aluminum or copper or something mm -hmm. like that, uh, where a 3D printer obviously is just plastic filament. There are different types of filament, but it's just filament. Yeah. <clears throat> good question. Very good question. Um, Rick also wanted to point out that he's in Fort Worth, Texas, and they got snow. Did you see that? I did see people had I, saw, I saw your little person. Yeah, yeah. It was like, snow. Yes. I follow this chick that lives in Dallas. Something yes. like that. She's got like a two-year-old. Two-year-old. It was the first time this kid had ever seen snow. <laughs> so <laughs> they were having a good time. Sir, Ijez Mayor, just to stay on the thing real quick, you said for X-Carve, what's best, Easel or Fusion 360? Um, I would mm -hmm. say Fusion 360 is way more powerful, way more complicated. If oh. you can do what you need to do in Easel, I'd do it through Easel. So what I used to do, and what I still do a lot, is if I'm doing something simple that's 2D, I will design it in either SketchUp or Illustrator and then import it into Easel. And that's how I did the, um, the face frames of the, uh, the nightstand that I did. Um, and that's how I did basically everything that I've done so far before what I did with the puzzle box mm -hmm. or you know, with the impossible dovetail. Keith has a question. Finally used my Craig concealed hinge jig and noticed that the pilot holes for the screws don't match the Euro hinges I bought. What kind of hinges work best? Yeah, Keith, that's a common uh, issue. Um, I've seen that and ran into that issue. I've used the Liberty hinges and they're pretty close. I think, I don't know what it is. Mm. It's something about the jig, but I think it's also just something about the, um, the way that some of those line up. It seems like they're all kind of a little bit different. Mm. So if you forget to drill those little hinges, don't worry about it. Uh, the pilot holes for the hinge screws, just put your hinge in there and then just drill them, mark and drill it. Like don't use the jig for that portion of it. Just mark and drill it with the actual hinge and it's no big deal. Yep. Javier Pablo uh, says uh, he's falling from Mexico, loves all the projects. Thank you, Javier. Any recommendations for clamps for the track saw, TB wooden frames? Hmm. Um, for clamps for the track saw. Uh, most of those, saw. most of those come with their own clamps, or at least they have specific types of clamps to fit the track. So the track that I have is the Craig track, and there are specific clamps for that. And I know they make clamps for um, the Festool or the Dewalt or whatever. Some of those will fit different ones, uh, but I honestly I don't hardly ever clamp the track. I just let the the friction, really rubber jobbies on the bottom do crazy man do the gripping. Um, Andrew wants to know, do you have a laser engraver slash cutter? Andrew, I, I did have one at one point. I do not currently. Yeah. And I just didn't use it enough back then. I think now would be a great time for me to re-enter, and I may. And I didn't like it as much anyway, mm -hmm. because, so that was, it was an old one. It was a um, uh, full-spectrum laser, yes. Hobby, Gen 4 or something. But it didn't have, the, it, was at the, it was the last cycle before they started getting the cameras. Oh. So now the new ones have the cameras because the biggest thing that I struggled with and did not like was putting it in there and having to get the material exactly right um, so that your print would be parallel to the board. Oh. So if it was slightly off uh, and now what they have with the new ones, like it'll actually take a picture of the thing and it will self align. And it'll say, hey, you can say, I want it to be parallel to this edge. And it'll be like, OK, cool. And it'll oh, do it nice. for you. Yeah, so nice. the features of that mm -hmm. one just weren't great. I wasn't using it enough, so I just I sold it, it's knowing that I would probably shop, which is never yeah, good. knowing that I would probably get another one later, which yeah. which I hope to at some point. Yep. Harmon Outdoors, thank you so much, DJ Walker, uh, a humidor. That'd be kind of fun. Although I don't smoke cigars, so um, kind of it's useless idea, as well for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nick wants to know: Does personal versus business matter on YouTube, like it does on Instagram? 
I don't think there is a personal versus business. If, if you're, on well, YouTube? yeah. Oh yeah. There is no, there's no personal versus business on YouTube. It's there YouTube is channel. a, there is a, what do they call it? Um, a, a creator account or something. There's, there's something. And that's only if you, um, if you own two channels under one email, it turns, uh, it's like a brand account or something like that, I think. But no, the, it has nothing to do with anything like that will not affect your account whatsoever. All right. Easy. That's easy. Mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Meticulous visions loves the secret drawer build. What project am I most proud of? I tell you what, dude, I've, I've been, um, I've definitely been doing a lot more this year, this past year that challenged me. Uh, yeah. And I think right now it would be the, um, the nightstand with the secret drawer because mm -hmm. there was just, I mean, I really did like this one, but in all honesty, it was mostly computer programming, not a lot of build complexity. Whereas that one had a lot of complexity in the build. Had some, you know, I was had a welded base, had the epoxy work in it. Um, and then just the mechanical workings of the hinge. That was, that's definitely my favorite one at the mm -hmm. moment. Uh, your concrete resource, check 3d concrete printing. I, I have seen that 3d concrete printing is crazy. What? It's insane. It's huh. like they have these huge machines that are like the size of buildings, you know, like warehouse or whatever. And they can like print walls and like That's what I've seen it. I've, I watched, um, Jerry rig everything and that the channel, YouTube channel and he 3d printed uh, a statue of himself <laughs> <laughs> and like put it in his friend's yard oh my gosh, that's and brought great. it over. It was hilarious. And they like filled the middle with like gravel. So it wouldn't, but it's like, it's just like you'd see in a 3d printer. It's just, but it's like the layers are like, you know, two inches thick like and cement? like, yeah, it, it, it looks like icing. They're just like, that's whoosh, crazy. It's, it's wild. Uh, huh. I think what they do a lot is they make, um, planners, like big planners that you would have like oh. outside of an office building or something. Yeah. And you can just build them in different shapes and layers. It's really cool. Huh. That's really cool. Uh, let's see here. Alex loves the work. Keep up the hustle. Thank you, my man. Um, continue making mistakes and we don't have to. Absolutely, Alex. That's what mm -hmm. I love to do. I love uh, going through it and sharing, sharing the experience with you guys because uh, we all make them. Joshua, thank you so much, my man. Watson Family Creations in Central Texas. They got four inches of snow. Wow, that's, that's crazy. Insane. Uh, all right, cool. What else do we um, have over here? Let's see. Rick, any recommendations oh, yep. on joining eight-foot boards? Um, some big boards. Yeah, if you're joining an eight-foot board, you're obviously going to have some issues. Your, your biggest, uh, what I would do is do some pre-jointing, if you will. Uh, Rick, if you have it, hopefully they're in pretty good shape. And when I say pre-joining, um, so the thing with a joiner, let's see if I can do one of my little displays here. So let's just use this for reference. Um, a little off cut from the cutting board. If you, let's say this is your joiner bed and this is the piece you want to join. So we're going to over exaggerate quite a bit, but let's just say you had this piece and you wanted to join it and this is your joiner bed. And then the cutter head obviously is in the middle. Um, the whole idea of a joiner is that you're on a flat surface and referencing the flat, mm -hmm. the flat cast iron to get a flat surface. The problem, your biggest problem is going to be if you have a large curve in the front, like if you have a, a bow in your board and it comes down in the front and down in the back, because what can happen is you come across and let's just say that the front end of this is hitting the joiner in the front. Um, and then it's, you know, it cuts it and it comes in. But what happens is if this back's hanging down, by the time it comes up, it's going to kick the board up. And so if you have a board that's really wonky, you're going to need to cut the ends for do a little bit of work on the ends, or you'll have to do a bunch of passes. And so what you can do is like joint the front, like just kind of jump and then flip it around, do it again, and then do the whole thing. So like hit your ends first, if you really have uneven ends, if you've got a bow to it, mm -hmm. if you don't have a bow to it, then just make sure you keep solid pressure. Uh, and when you're running a joiner, you all, once you get past the cutter head, you want the joiner, you want your pressure to be on the in feed, not on the out feed or you'll rock it. Um, excuse me. i have reversed that. You want it to be on the out feed, not the in feed. As soon as you have enough over the out feed, you want to put your pressure on that out feed side because that's the new surface that you're referencing. So I hope that helps. I know it's kind of hard to explain, but, um, that's B what it be. D Barker, how do I decide what project I'm going to do next for the channel? Uh, it depends on a lot of things, honestly, but um, 
it's mainly like what's going on in our house. What do we need at the moment? Right. Uh, like if it's a renovation, that obviously takes some precedence. Right. <laughs> Uh, there for are sure. different things we do for sponsors, so sponsors can come into it. There's a bunch of different variables, and they kind of all come together, and it, it's just us evaluating, like, our timeline. Right. Uh, the you time know, of year. Time of, right, what, what projects are going to resonate right. at the current time? What have we done in the past, right? So if I do, uh, like, this puzzle board, I'm, I'm not going to do one directly after that. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do seven shop projects in a row. I'm going to mix it up. So, and we take all those things into consideration, and then if we do have something for sponsors where we need to incorporate. Typically our, with with my projects, I would say 90 plus percent of them, um, sponsors do not have input into the actual project, maybe the integration of it, but for most of them, they don't. So that it, it's a little bit easier that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of complex, it just depends. Um, Razor has a question for you. Why yeah. did you choose to do your live streams on this channel rather than on your main channel? Uh, good question. Hey, what's up, Scott and Rory in the house? What's up? And Jill, yeah, what's up, Jill? A lot of people Jill? have joined in. Oh, a lot of people joining lately. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, uh, Nick, Nick Admire, Nick Admire just followed you. Hmm? I don't know who Nick Admire is. Well, they're, they're all sharing their, sharing their handles. Oh, so gotcha. you might have followed somebody else. Oh, okay. Sorry. I so was on, like, what? Yeah. I, I read that as, on hey, YouTube, Brad, somehow. All the people I don't are know like why. Sharing their handles so that they can follow right, each sorry, other. Sorry, sorry, each other's work. Yes, mm-hmm. my bad. I missed that. Um, what was the question? I completely um, blanked. Oh, was, why did I choose this place? So, right, so why, why am I streaming? Channel? By the way, so uh, actually, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what. This is a good segue. Uh, we're gonna cut it short. Uh, what's up, Scott Walsh? We got we got a bunch of folks coming on on Instagram. Um, oh, Rick, what's up, man? We're drinking your beer, brother. Thanks. Uh, but we are gonna we're gonna cut it short. So what we typically like <laughs> to do is cut it short on on Instagram and we do the entire live over on YouTube. So come join us over on YouTube. We're at Fix This Build That Live. It's the second channel. Uh, and I'll talk about why we do a second channel. If you go over and I would love for you to join, um, just go over and say in the comments, hey, just came over from Instagram. We'd love to see you there. If not, go check out the video uh, that I just released on the Impossible Cutting Board. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Have a great week and get out there and build something awesome. See you guys. Man, I look, I look dirty. I was just looking up close. I'm like, man, I got, <laughs> I got all kinds of stuff going on up here. Oh my gosh. Um, so the, the main reason that I'm doing it on the second channel um, is just because of the, uh, <clears throat> the, so what I like to do is, am I knocking on the door? What I like to do is, uh, you know, I, I look at this stuff. I always love when we do that because I feel, don't feel like I have to just be all up in your face because we've got the nice wide angle I know. Here. We can just, you don't have to get so I know. close. I know. Even you don't have to act like you like me. You. <laughs> uh, what we do is, is uh, the live is every week, right? So the frequency is every week. We've not missed a week in literally years. And so I know that every single week the live mm-hmm. is going to be coming out. On the main channel, we're all over the place, right? So we will release back to back weeks. We'll go two yeah. weeks in general. We're about once every two weeks. Uh, but that could look like every one, two or three weeks, right. uh, but Just mainly depends. every two weeks. And so if I did it on the main channel, what would happen is that <clears throat> the, that content would overwhelm the, this content, the live content would overwhelm the regular content. If I left it uh, live and available, cause I can always delist it. Uh, but, I like having it there so people can go back and watch. I mean, I know people aren't going back and watching last years or anything, um, but if people missed a week or two or three, they could go back and catch up and watch the beginning, see their shout. That's the other thing is I like to have it so that the, the Builders Club folks, if they wanted to go see uh, where I called up their name, they could see, they could go in there. Uh, and so that that's the main reason is just that it's too frequent in comparison to the main channel content and it would overrun that type of content. And also I can't turn off notifications for lives. Like I can't say, hey, don't notify my followers about lives. So they'd be getting a bunch of notifications, <laughs> which would mean they'd turn the notifications off a portion of them who don't come to the lives. Right. Um, because, you know, we have over a million people over there. Clearly we do not have over a million people here. No. But we love you guys. Which is okay. Uh, yeah. so, th- so that's the main reason. It's just, it's just that it's um, a logistics thing. So yep. that'd be it. That's it. But we like it here. We yes. like it here. And, and I, I am actually, I was talking with my YouTube partner. Um, I've got a, a partner manager who, who works at YouTube and we were talking about the channel. And I think what I'm going to start doing is like a quarterly. I love when you share things. 
with the audience when I share them with right, you Right, like the this is time. the first I'm hearing mm -hmm. of it too. So honest reaction time. So we'll probably do so what, quarterly? A, like a quarterly live Okay. on the main channel. Oh, okay. Oh. And just be like, hey, like here's what's going on. That's a good here's idea. what's happened in the last quarter. Like here's the big video. That's I thought it'd be kind of fun. It's like it's like yeah, a quarterly like recap. Like a summary. Yeah. Here's what's happened in the channel. The and that big way ones. it wouldn't be overwhelming and everything in the feed. Right. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Hey. It's like I could have so, come up with that, but I didn't. Yeah, yeah. You know. No, but it's all good. It's all it's good. good. Uh, oh. There it is Rick, dude. We're we're digging this beer. Or I am. Susan's not drinking right now. Yeah, I'm not. Um, but it's I like it. I like it a lot. It is really good. I had a sip. And it was delicious. It's about as far as it's tasty. Right yeah. Um, oh man, it smells good. Oh, uh, Scott Walsh came on over. What's up, Scott? Yeah. I said, thanks good for job, coming Scott. over. Yes. Good, good <laughs> what? Whenever people come over Doobies, and I catch it, I like to compliment Doobie, them. Doobie's custom was, it was rejected from Instagram, but thank you for coming over. Yes. Doobie, I, I saw you over there. Uh, Tiger Tail Products YouTube made. Another one. Set Steve a channel just came to over comment. from Instagram. Oh, that's crazy. People want to see the cutting board. They're coming I, over. Uh, good, good. Is that is that Steve Sapelli? I love it. I don't Steve, know. And then Steve S. Up north, north, not up north. Up north. <laughs> I like that. Jumped on over. <laughs> That's how Instagram. our daughter would pronounce awesome. it. Yeah, it would. Yes. Um, uh, and I think there was a question also uh, earlier. Oh. I think Keith may have asked the um, plans for the <laughs> for the vanity. I'm like, hey, when are the vanity plans coming? Eh, I am actively wow. uh, hiring a uh, a plan person. So I've just, I don't have the time to make the plans anymore, quite honestly. Uh, and, and so I have somebody coming on and they'll probably, so it's going to be until they can get it done, quite yeah. frankly. Honey, we have like yes, Nick jumped over, Ryder jumped, o jumped over, Devlin jumped Devlin, over. awesome. Up north, Steve. Fantastic. Love it. All, all, all right. Look, here, see, we can see the little, uh, oh, the little yeah, tick you can. up. Yeah, That's uptick awesome. On up the little line graph. Tick up, up, tick up. Um, okay. So, so how many, how many hey, folks? I was going to tell you. Sorry. Um, Jubster Builds says, hey, Brad, I love your vanity build so much that I'll be going out of my comfort zone and building it on camera and posting a YouTube video on my channel of my process. Love it. Inspiration. There you go. Love it. Cheers, cheers. Um, so how many folks did actually watch the video? Or how many folks? Taylor's here. <laughs> T-Hub in the house. Yes. Uh, came over from Vero. <laughs> <laughs> came over from Parlor. Um, oh, no, let's not go there. No, we won't go there. We will not. How many people have not watched the video? Because if, if y'all... <laughs> you say this? I'm expecting to be able to see hands going up in the crowd. Give me hands. You. What's, in, what's your problem? <laughs> it's just a uh, camera lens. No. Uh, if, you know, if y'all want to see that, I'll, I'll show it to you, but I don't want to spoil it because it is, it's a really fun moment to watch. Uh, and it's painful as well, but Which it's, one? it's fun to watch me work my way through it. Uh, so if you have seen the video, then, uh, you know what I'm talking about. But, uh, if y'all, if there are folks that haven't seen it, then I will, uh, I'll hold off, but you know, maybe at the very end we'll be like, if there right, are people, like, sign off we'll now. Like, All right. Don't sign, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. I don't want to, I don't want to ruin it for anybody. Okay. So Teresa is saying, and somebody else said this earlier. Did you know that the guy Home Renovision mentioned you in his porch remodel video? I did, yes. I didn't, you I didn't saw tell me this. Somebody, um, I feel like I'm very out of the loop. There's been like five <laughs> things tonight that you're like, I haven't told you this. Somebody, you uh, somebody told me about it. It was like maybe a month ago, a month and a half oh, ago. Really? It was about the time when we were talking to him. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Uh, so I, I, thought it was I was like, like after the conversation. And I was DMing him and uh, he was getting some advice from him on. Um, and and I made a, I made oh, a, it was um, a flooring, I think, right? Somebody, whoever works for his channel or whatever, reached out to me for his 50th birthday. And I like, if you go watch that, I'm actually in that video. There's a video oh. on his channel. Where I wished him like a happy 50th, and um, <laughs> yeah, he's a beast, man. He, yeah, he he's is. crushing it over there. Just makes awesome content. I mean, he's just so knowledgeable. I, I like Jeff. He's a good guy. Yeah. Uh, but it's yes, I did because Mike, Mike Montgomery. He, they shouted out Modern Builds, and then oh, and then me, which was fun. That's cool. All right. Uh, um, don't show Bird dog sought by 11 last <laughs> night. <laughs> um, all the shame. Uh, 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 Rick, he, he says, he's, he's not yet, but he already knows the trick. Uh, yes, hello, hello, Walnut, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see, Razor says, okay, Brad, you now know the secret to get people over from IG. Announce a question and then cut off IG feed. <laughs> yes. I don't think it was that intentional, but there you go. <clears throat> no, but it was perfect. It did work out uh, nicely. So, don't show it. The video is worth the suspense and comic relief. Yeah, I did Tiger really Tail. I, I totally agree with you. For sure. 
You can hear Brad sing on it. I know. Right away in the beginning. I personally really enjoyed the <laughs> like I was cracking up when when you were talking to yourself in the video and you're like, should oh. I do this? I should do this. No. No, I shouldn't do this. If, if no, you, like oh my gosh. Really that is just hundred percent pure Brad. Like not that you talk to yourself a lot, but I'm just saying like there's no acting going on there. He was really trying to figure out yeah. what was going on. If you really so want funny. some insight into my brain, that just is a good video. video to watch when yeah. I'm when I'm trying to get that fit. Like oh my gosh. And I was just kind of like, it was really funny because yeah, typically I that's a conversation I have in my head. Right. But since I was, I knew I was, you know, it was it was really kind of it was almost like I had a friend sitting there and I was like, should Maybe I do because this? Because you weren't doing no. a. You weren't doing yeah. a voiceover this time, so it was like, well, I'll just go ahead and talk. I don't know, but like, yeah, it was, I, it I would love to hear uh, y'all's feedback. I know a lot of you have seen the video, uh, and a lot of you obviously are are uh, loyal fans, which we fully appreciate so we much. Do. Uh, but I would love to hear feedback on what you guys thought about that format. So obviously, it is uh, a lot different than some of my instructional content, like let's say the vanity build, where. It's, it's definitely more of like, okay, here's what I did. And the projects are very different. My intent wasn't to teach how to make this board because I don't think a lot of people will do it. And it was more about coming alongside me and watching me go through the exploration process of trying to figure something out. And, uh, and so we used uh, a lot more just on camera talking. And then uh, Scott, who just crushed it on the, on the music and the montages. Yes, for sure. Uh, and so doing that, which is a, a lot more, um, you know, like a more like an entertainment experience where you just kind of sit right. back and and watch. So I'd, I'd love to just hear some of your feedback on right. how you like that and how you like those two, because um, I really enjoy this style. Okay, I, really, well, I enjoy that style. Dad it yourself says, I love the split screens and the music. It was a departure from your normal format. Yes. Yeah. Like so, I said, I, Scott. You, they like it. They like it. Was crushing it on the yes, on the, the music was awesome. montages with the <laughs> dude Scott. This is like you know how good cutting board feels. Yeah, I'm just over here. Just keep rubbing the cutting board because it's like just it's so smooth. Okay, so Bird Dog says I feel like there was a lot more personality in that video, which I loved. I agree. I think that's true. Just because whenever you've done anything that's very discovery based, like making the hidden drawers and. Um, most of the hidden drawers, but then also like the electrical stuff when you're trying to figure it out. Like you're just on screen figuring it out, which stresses me out. Like I'm like, oh my gosh, what if he never <laughs> figures this out? But he always does. And so you get all your reactions like live on screen. Yeah. And it just, it is more, it's just, you're seeing the process as opposed to, you know, you're like Brad's really good about sharing the highs and the lows on every project, but it's just different. You know, it's the process. Ain't no man. No, I'm sorry. Oh gosh. <laughs> Jill said, who knew that What's he had a vibrato? a vibrato? I think it's like the tone of your voice or something. A, I know. Brad has a really good voice. Yeah. I do not. It's a little I annoying. I used to. You, um, whatever. You just don't sing enough. I know. Uh, anyway. What was the... Um, oh. What was Bird Dog saying? It's been... Oh. <laughs> uh, oh, the Maker Christmas Carol. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, We're talking yeah. about the Maker Christmas Carol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, that was funny. funny. That was That was fun. Yeah. Uh, okay, here's it. Uh, Blake, what's up, dude? Thank you. Uh, Rory. <laughs> Rory, if you've not watched it, man, you you might need you. Uh, you couldn't. You can't really cut over and come back. It's a long one too. Um, I think that uh, it's it's like 19 minutes. So. Um, mm -hmm. it's, oh, it's, it's good. I love this feedback. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was. It was. Um, yeah, giddy like the valley project i think that was really fun doing this style project where i don't know if i'm going to be able to actually make it work like i mean that, that's the thing about i was just talking with a guy today and it's like i really don't even want to want to make like dining tables or coffee table like anything like i mean even cabinets to a certain extent it's well, like, yeah. there's a known outcome. I know exactly what it looks like. I know how to make it. And right. it's just like doing it and teaching, which I do enjoy, but I've done a lot of um, over the past, you know, four and a half years. And so, um, I said it's only been three and a half. I told them four and a half. Uh, sorry, I was just thinking. <laughs> I, feel, I, I feel that thing. I feel that thing. It's a long time. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's only, it's 20, <laughs> in the middle of 2016, uh, yeah. which is actually three and a half years. Oops. But anyway, um, my point is, is that uh, it's fun when I go in and I have no idea how I'm going to make it work or if it's going to work. 
Whereas when I'm going to make something that uh, has kind of known constraints and it's like I've done something very similar to that, I, yeah, like when I finish up a tabletop, I'm not like, yes, I cannot believe that worked. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, it's just not that type of thing. I mean, it still might look amazing, and, but it's just, it's more like, oh yeah, that looks great, versus like the excitement that you get from, uh, you know, from doing something for the first time, doing something that you don't know if you can actually do or not. So I, I've really enjoyed this style of content, and uh, I dare say this will be the majority of the style of content that we will do. We will still do some hardcore instructional, I'm sure, um, at least for the time being. But uh, I, I've really enjoyed being the, going through the exploration. Yeah, it's been fun. It's kind of one of those that things where you good. just, you know, like you said, time goes by and like your, your interests by. change and stuff. I know. Um, Jill, I haven't seen Katie on here yet. She's looking for it, Katie. Andrew, yeah. you're going to build a snowboard. I mean, that's Three, impressive. Three, four different iterations from the first one. Dude, I love, yeah, love that, man. That's That's, cool. that's like That'd a great. That'd be a great video. Yeah. That's, that's a fan, I don't know if you're making uh, fantastic but, way to yeah. do that. And yeah, that'd be really fun. Uh, and I think it would be pretty similar to skateboard builds and builds. And I know there's a lot of people that have done skateboards, but mm -hmm. you know, it's, I mean, it's going to be uh, bent lamination of, I would assume, bent lamination of different plywood and then putting whatever fiber glass in it or, <laughs> or however. But yeah, that, that's awesome, man. Let us know how that goes. Keep coming, yep. keep coming back and keep us updated, Andrew. Uh, Keith. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, so Keith is act, asking about Patreon codes and 100% yeah, the Patreon know. codes will, uh, flow over and do flow over month to month. Right. Um, we have people that have oh, hordes of them. Right. Lot, <laughs> I think I have a couple guys that have more, <clears throat> more codes than I actually have plans at this point. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's, those will, those will flow over for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see here. I saw a question. Uh, Scott thought 18 minutes was long, but it was like two super videos. It yeah. flowed great. Yeah, it was. And it was actually 19 minutes, Scott. <laughs> 19, 19, I believe. Just shy of 20. Uh, yeah, but um, and that it was kind of fun because I did build <clears> like <throat> I it was like it was like three different projects. Like I mm -hmm. built the sliding one, then I built the cube and then I built the actual one. So, I mean, I could have done individual projects on any three of these. Although, you know, doing this versus the, the major board probably wouldn't have made sense. But, um, yeah, it was fun. It was fun to just kind of keep going. So there was payoffs along the way instead of just, like, waiting and waiting and waiting for the final project. Right. Um, what did I just see? Was there a reason that you did the project on the CNC instead of a router table? And this is Blake. He's saying that uh, for, a C or for the router table, that would have been more comfortable for him because he could, like, just nudge the bit over for a perfect fit. What was your reasoning? Uh, yeah, so for me, honestly, Blake, I think that um, for me it'd be the opposite. That's the reason I did use the CNC because, uh, you know, when you're talking about a, a nudge, I was taking off four thousandths of an inch at a time on the, on the CNC when I was doing those passes to widen the dovetail. So the way that I did it, uh, if you've not seen the video yet, the way I did it is I cut the male dovetail first, so the, the, the keystone part first. I cut that and just let that be whatever it was, and I didn't worry about, you know, just kind of cut it. Um, and then I came back and cut, um, and, and I'll, I guess I can just use this one as an example um, without giving away the other one. So I cut the keystone here first, and then I came back and cut the, <clears throat> the female portion of the dovetail second. And I cut it basically exact. So like when I modeled it, I cut it exact. And I knew that wouldn't fit. I knew it would be too tight. Um, and so then I just did the tool path where I would go and take off. I just chose four for no apparent reason, but uh, four mil at a time. And that way I could keep stepping it out. I feel like making those such minor adjustments using a, a <laughs> router would be very hard. Because also, once I did the multiple dovetails, so this one's got, you know, it's, it's basically got six dovetails on it, mm -hmm. um, or 12, or 12, depending upon how you look at whatever. it, well, six running <laughs> side to works. side and interweaved, uh, is that you'd have to do that. You'd have to nudge between, like, man, that would just be too, I don't even know how you would do that. Like, how would you nudge in between all of those and keep them straight? Because at that large scale, you've, you've got to be perfect. Uh, to make it work or it, it'll bind up on you. So I thought it was easier to do the CNC by yeah. far. 
So there you go. Well, there you go. So Dad at Yourself is saying that he watched the video with ads and all because he's trying to help you out. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate RLLs, that. RLLs, Liz. I do the same thing. I tried to hold back. I appreciate that. <laughs> I tried to hold back. Uh, so just a little behind the scenes baseball for you. Um, but uh, let's hear who was it. Kevin, I'm glad you're digging the isotunes, by the way. Yeah. Um, and oh, and got, Jill. Jill got some for Christmas. That's awesome. I'm Loves glad you guys them. are loving they're the isotunes. Really nice. I love my isotunes. Yeah. I mean, I've got a, a ton of different pairs of them, and they're great. Uh, the extra 2.0s are my favorite right now. But um well, inside baseball, the way that it works is like mm -hmm. when you when you publish a video, they will auto publish ads for you. They put it in there like that's something they, they do now. Uh, and if you don't go in there and change it, those are the ones that are run. So when I auto published, it served up five ads and I was like, no, that is too much. Oh, yeah. And so I backed them down. I could go in there and they don't show all the ads to everybody. So mm, actually, I'd be interested, Scott and Kevin, was it Kevin? Scott and, and Kevin or whoever else said it. I had three ads pop up. Um, you had three ads pop yeah. up? How many ads popped up for you? I'm very interested to hear that, actually. I'm pretty sure it was three. Yeah. Because some, because different, so three is the max that you would ever get shown. But how many ads popped yeah. up? Because what I've heard is that, um, what I've been told is that they don't show all the ads to all the people all the time. And so that's why I'm always, I'm always like, okay, well. They're like, it's I'm his not wife. As, <laughs> right. Let's give her I'm all I'm not the ads. as worried about it. Um, <laughs> but I kind of feel like maybe they're lying to us. Just so oh. that we'll keep more in there. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. But the way I feel about it is like, so I try not to do more than one every five minutes. And so right. on a longer video, because it's like, you know, it's really I mean, every five minutes and you can get, and, and you can do a skippable five second ad. Yeah. And it, like, it helps support the channel. So I, I, I don't absolutely know you appreciate guys. you guys. When I'm, when I'm watching a video and an ad pops up. And it's a really short one, and I can tell, like, I can click through it. It doesn't really bother me that much. Well, it's so pro that's yeah. th that's the thing. So since they did that, if you're not doing ads, you're in the minority now, because you're they rolled doing, out. Oh, okay. If you don't do ads, uh, you're in the minority because they they serve them on everybody's content now as a default. Wait a minute, YouTube what? does. Oh yeah. Even if you said if you if you never said I want to do ads. Yes. So all these people are like just magically making money now, and they're like, no. why am I no, making no, no, money? No, 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 no. You have to be if you're in the partner program, which oh. is. But also now they're serving ads on people that are not on it. So what? like YouTube is just running ads. And so if I they're didn't run ads as a content creator, I would be in the minority. Mm -hmm. And not that that's a bad thing. I know some people do that because right. they're like, hey, I don't want people to see ads. But, right. um, you know, it's most people are um, sensitized or desensitized to be able to just be like, OK, the ad, whatever. And it's not a big right. deal. Uh, but so I will highly recommend like for anybody I've been doing it for years now is a uh, YouTube premium. I mean, it is like the well, best thing. I've not seen an ad in and I don't have it. Three which years. Is so funny, but like, I'm so used to it. Well, I don't know why you don't just watch. I don't them. know either. Well, no, don't watch well, them on my account. I don't want your junk on I my know. account. I <laughs> know we watch different things, but I kind of like, from the standpoint of the business, I like that my YouTube account has the ads because then I'm when, when I'm watching our videos or like sometimes it'll, you can it'll, see where it's yeah, placed. Like yeah, like I'll be like, oh look, this one has an ad but here or whatever. Like it, I mean, you, you can premium, do that in the creator, but right. Still, but if you get premium. It's been you get no ads and it's a monthly, you know, I think it's like 10 bucks it? a month. I thought it was more than that. It may have gone up a little bit, Maybe I need to but upgrade. it used to be 10 bucks a month. And, um, and then what they do is they look at all the premium watch time and they basically like spread that money oh. between all the hours that have been watched. I mean, so we make sense. a lot like yeah. creators make a lot less money from people who are on premium, but you know, you're, you would never have to watch a hmm. YouTube inserted video ad again. And for like as much YouTube as I watch, I mean, like literally, I could, I'm saving money. It's totally worth it, I'm sure. Yeah. By the time it's, you have to watch all those. Yep, that's funny. Uh, Scott Walsh, have a good one, my man. Uh, <laughs> Blake oh, Katie's doesn't. On. Blake doesn't trust his robot. <laughs> um, let's see here. What's up, Katie? Just getting home from Fort Worth. Oh goodness. Uh, Elliot only had one ad. There you go. All there right. There you go. Well, I guess, Thanks, Elliot. I guess. Uh, I guess it is true. There were two at the beginning and two right before your ad read. I don't mm. remember if there was one after that. Oh, well, it, so then that's really only two because the, if it's two in the beginning, they like, I don't, it's not, it doesn't show up as two. It just shows up. Oh, that's actually true. I didn't yeah. think about that. So bird dog, I think Brad probably that's answered your question. Role. He wants to know since he pays for the ad free version, does that screw us over? And it, it shouldn't. No. Right? no, I mean, we make, well, actually, I don't even know that to be a fact. <laughs> we assume it's okay. Um, no, no, it, it's like we get money. Mm -hmm. We do get money from the premium. We do. I, right. I was just thinking about it. I think there's just so many, there's like hardly anybody does it. It's weird. Like, so when I, I, what I, when I get a, uh, 
you know, when I get my reports, it says how many views were like AdSense views and how many views were premium views. And it's like 95% to 5%. I mean, it's like really wow. skewed. Wow. Yeah. So like hardly anybody does premium, which blows my mind. Hmm. Um, but yeah, we do get a, we do get a but cut it's that threshold of premium. thing though. I bet people, cause I mean, I get the little pop-up thing all the time. Like well, yeah. you want one month free you want premium? and I've never done it. And I don't know why, like, I mean, part of me is like, oh, I've just been able to see like how the ads are popping up on the videos for people. I see you drinking my water. Um, but I don't know, like, it's just, it feels like you shouldn't have to pay for YouTube in a way, yeah. but that's silly. You know, I mean, I get that. That's silly. Yes. Uh, oh, that's a bird dog. Yeah. No, that does not at all. And I think it's funny. Um, did you know that when an ad pops up, like if I'm watching somebody else's video, I read recently that when an ad pops up um, during the video, that the person who is paying for the ad, that company, they don't pay for it unless it gets all the way to the end of the ad. Like if you skip the ad, they don't have to pay for that ad. Or they don't pay as much. They pay a fraction of the price unless it gets all the way watched through. Um, Something like that. That may be true. I don't know if it's mid-real ones way, or what. But the but way yeah. that they do it, like we don't not earn money no, 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 no. I'm just saying and, for so the person must, who paid for the right. ad to be on YouTube. Because they're talking about like if you're going to have ads, well, they're where skippable, should you put them? Right, and they're skippable and non-skippable ads. I mean, it's all kinds of, it's, right. it's a whole it's in, system. It was interesting to me. There's, there's like, so now every time I skip an ad, I'm like, oh, they didn't have to pay for this. <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not. Yeah, there's but, yeah. like seven different ad types if you really get into it. It's a Between all thing. the combinations yeah. of everything, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, and I'm sure it's always kind of shifting too. Oh, Jill, it's 17 a month now. What is this? It used what? to be 10 a month when, Ooh, I, wow. when I started. Um, yep. Yeah, 98 to two. Yeah, Scott, I, it's it is like that. It's it's crazy. Richard Whoa. says we're just too broke to pay for premium. Taylor, I pay, Rick. like that's why Taylor, I'm like, whatever. What's I'll just the watch age the of that walnut? Taylor, this is. This one looks like a brownie to me. Can you show them the top? This one is aged. Um, it looks like a. Almost, you know, almost like seven years. No, this was brownie. not part of the two fourteen fourteen, uh, the two one fourteen batch, but this was very oh, old. That's why. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. If this is no. That, from the post-it note, it's still hanging strong, Taylor. By the way, I mean, it, I, I don't think it's going to go anymore. I think it's just like we're left with like little bits and pieces. But yeah, this was from walnut that I rescued uh, from a mill a mill workshop probably four years ago, maybe five. <laughs> I love it. Jill probably at least is, five, actually. Jill's babysitting her nephews in the morning, and just hearing about Paw Patrol and PJ Masks is taking me back down memory lane. PJ Masks. PJ, PJ Masks. Masks. It's a PJ Masks. Yes. I mean, and then Blippi, I guess that must have come along after our kids. Oh, yeah. No, I don't grew know. up a little yeah. bit more. So, uh, you know, I, 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 so Nailbender says he's using an ad blocker, which... I get it. I get it. Uh, you know, if you don't want to see ads, but, and Google does, but that's, so you're taking away more money from the creators than you are from YouTube. Just so you know, uh, oh. we get 60% of the ad revenue and they get 40%. So again, I'm not trying to it's guilt you into it. Just letting you know, in Whatever. case you didn't that, um, yes, the, the creators actually make more than YouTube out of that ad revenue. And when you run an ad blocker, we don't make anything. So all right. If everybody used an ad blogger, I wouldn't make YouTube videos, just so you know. <laughs> I mean, but you know, whatever. I'm not, again, not trying to guilt you, just letting you know, be aware. Because enough, and they're always changing it. So I mean, I don't, I've never used an ad blocker, so I don't know how they work. But I do mm. know that they try to get around, like in the ad blockers are always trying to stay ahead of YouTube and YouTube. And same thing for like websites and My stuff gosh. like that. Oh yeah, it's a whole thing. Yeah, it sounds like But it. I get it, I get it. I mean, I understand. Yep. But I'm just glad that, not everybody does. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't. It's like one of those things, like the make, what is that uh, called? Like if you have blog posts that you follow, and like, like where you can. Oh, my sister told me about this thing. Like you can see what their latest RSS posts. Feed? Yes. Yeah. Like if you don't go straight to their site, they don't get kind of like the ad revenue. Oh, like it, it, yeah. They don't get if you're just reading it like, like on a the scraper traffic type. on their site. Yeah. yeah. And they don't get the ad revenue. So yeah. my sister's one that told me Same about that thing. way back in the day, and she was like, "But I always go to the site and read the article there." because I want them to get all the credit for it, but a lot of people didn't know that. So that was kind of hitting the blogging people hard. Yes. A couple years ago, I guess. The um, bloggers. Yeah, the oh yeah. But yep. you know, they're, it's, they're always trying to yep. oh my gosh. figure that out kids and shows. everything. When is the giveaway Love for it. the cutting board? Uh, Scott, <laughs> never. never. Actually, I was thinking Stay about here. 
sure. giving away this one. This bottom one. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Doc McStuffins and Mickey Mouse Club. Oh, oh Kevin, my gosh. Those, are, those are good ones. Our middle guy was so into Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. And uh, Macy was a, she was was a big Doc, Doc. Doc yep. McStuffins. We just liked all the shows. Uh, Nailbender. Thumbs up on that, my man. He says he prefers to support uh, creators directly, which is uh, a great way to support them. So, yeah, I, I fully support that, uh, that mindset. Uh, yep. oh, the Ryan kid is worth 144 million. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That guy's Ryan's I just toy wonder about that. Review. Like he's getting older. I mean, I guess that they have cashed in already. Oh, they changed but the whole thing. But at a certain, what do you mean? They, uh, well, sorry. Are they, they all old pictures of him now? Cause he's gotta be like. No, he's, I think he's like seven or eight now. I mean, okay. he was like really young when they. Like, when they I, it's just one of those things where you know there's only so much he's shelf like life. No, they're that. changing it. They're like, because I think it's like the thing though, is that. Those kids who are watching him, they're aging up too. Oh, that's so true. It's kind of like your it's like your friend. I'm sure they're probably that's like, oh, so Ryan. It's beyond me. Like, I guess yeah. we never watch. Our kids are too old for that. But I see his stuff everywhere in Target. He's got, have, oh, yeah, like, he's got toys. That's, so much stuff. It's it ridiculous. Is, it is but, insane. Yeah, I could totally see. If our kids had been young when he was a thing, they'd be like, I want Ryan's <laughs> world stuff. Like, he's, didn't he make the most money of everybody on YouTube one yeah. year? That's insane. Yep. And yeah. he's like little. Like <laughs> he'll never have to work again. Yes. I mean, Rick, it's nuts. Speaking of revenue, what percentage of my income comes from YouTube versus other sources? Um, I don't know that. What was it exactly? What like what oh. percent revenue comes? So it's hard to say because it, it's all very intertwined. So like plan sales, there's a huge portion of plan sales that come from links out of YouTube. So kind of like, where do you put that, right? Yeah. You, because if I didn't have the YouTube video out, I wouldn't have made that plan sale. Um, so, and then obviously, you know, sponsorship, same type thing, like actual paid sponsorships versus ad revenue and affiliate. Um, I mean, I would say like, if you really factored in all the fingers of it, like if, if YouTube, if I was not on YouTube and I was only running mm -hmm. my blog and Instagram, gosh, I would say at least 60%. I would say, yeah. I, but I would have to find other ways. Oh, I would say, like, if you tie all that stuff in. Now, I think if that went away, those other weights would come up a little bit. Um, I mean, the weights obviously would come up, but right. I think the the value would come up because I'd push harder on other areas. Uh, but because we do have YouTube and we have our largest following is YouTube, we use it to our advantage. Um, whereas, you know, I don't really push plans at all on Instagram. Whereas, so I would start ha I would Not start really, doing yeah. that a lot more and stories and stuff like that and uh, in different avenues. But yeah, I'd say in the ballpark, uh, uh, probably 60%. But that's kind of like an all in number, if you will. That's anything directly flowing through YouTube. So not just YouTube ad revenue or YouTube sponsorships. All right, we've got two really good questions here. Andrew says, is every click on, vid on a video money or do they have to watch the whole video? And then there's a question about saw stop technology. So, so the um, duration is important, right? Well, you, you don't make money that way. Like it doesn't matter how long you've watched the video, my video. What matters is like for YouTube ad revenue, it's just if you saw the ad or not. Mm. And, and I don't know the answer to like if the ad starts playing and you immediately cancel your browser, like would that pay me the minuscule? So the, the going ad rate, so I make about um, two, Two, and in general, if you look at it, it'd be about. I don't know if that's right or not, but they they, they have it on Social Blade. Is it way if they have it on Social Blade? It's like two dollars and fifty cents per thousand views in YouTube ad revenue would be like my take. And it depends on. Uh, so like each view is worth you know whatever fractions of pennies. Does it depend? I can't remember this. I'm thinking I'm confusing it with. Amazon, but does YouTube, does it depend on the type of content that you're putting out there oh, yeah. as to how yeah, yeah, much? Yeah, yeah. Because exactly. The whole it's thing, all, that, that's, you know, all weighted about, and everything. Yeah. So somebody was talking about Ryan's world and how like this, it, granted, they've made a lot of money, but then they came along last year and they changed up yeah. like kids vid videos that are marketed Listen, for kids. The whole ad revenue, they can be monetized. They can be, but it's They can't trickier, be right? targeted. They can't use targeted advertising. Oh. So oh. when you came on, if you're watching a kid video, they can't hit you with a like Toys R Us or yeah. like whatever your <laughs> Toys R Us. Whatever Not your, that one. <laughs> your right. So yeah. like when I go on, they're always hitting. Well, I don't get them, but like 
on that blog is really posts. True. I'm I always getting that. like whatever I last searched for, right? Or whatever site I was on. So I'm getting like woodworking stuff and you know, like I was getting yeah. always get wood. It's really funny because I always get ads from my sponsors and I'm like, guys, ads for? can you just like put me off, like take me, <laughs> take me <laughs> like, off yeah, I get Inventables ads all the time. That's funny. Uh, Woodcraft ads. Get ads for. I get ads from the Isotunes. I get ads from them all the time. Yeah. Um, and so those are targeted ads because they know I've been on those websites and well, you can't serve that type of ad. And I, I never saw a, an article or a study on like, they were estimating that those ads would be 75% less worth or pay 75% less than a targeted ad. Wow. But I don't know if that ever came to fruition or I not. I don't know. I don't remember either. I mean, that was like about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. COVID happened. Luckily, so. we don't make stuff knows? for kids. Yeah, so we don't, we don't do that. It's all good. We don't play that game. But um, yeah, I think that's interesting because... Um, I forget what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. It was really interesting. Other tools behind um, Zach, um, I've, I've heard about, I heard people doing saw stop technology for several different things, but I've never seen anything come of it. And the fact that saw stop has not done it, I think it tells bounds because they would be, they own the patent on the flesh detection technology, not its application to table saws, but just its application in to general. machinery and, and the conductive the conductivity. Um, so I, I think a table saw is one of the easier ones just because of how much room they have to work with and all that stuff. And, and like, you know, how would you do that on a, like on a bandsaw, you'd have to like snap the blade and like roll it in, you know? I mean, it, it because there's nowhere for the blade to go, right? It, it can't go below the table because it's a continuous band. Um, I could see them doing it on a joiner, even though that I think that would be harder. Um, a router table seems like an easy one, or I mean, easy because if you have it in a table because it could drop but mm -hmm. the other thing too is the speeds so a table saw i think is in the i don't know 3500 rpm range where a router table could be in 10 times that could be in the 32000 rpm range um, if you have it cranked all the way up so i think there's a lot of different uh, issues with doing it in other tools um, and the fact that it's not come out i mean obviously speaks right. to how hard it is i guess For sure are you going to reveal anything or no um, yeah. All right. So if uh, a lot time. of people, oh yeah, it is getting that time. People are hopping oh, off. Oh gosh, it's 10, 10. Okay. For all this <laughs> folks there and Rory sign off. If you haven't already, you don't want to see, this? You don't wanna see how it goes, but we'll, we'll just show, we'll show how it goes. So I'll get, and this is, well, it's, it's on delay. So even you have been warned. So if you have, if you don't want to see it, then don't be here, but here it goes. Uh, and man, and I have to figure it out. So there is a trick to it. Obviously there's a trick to it. You guys know that. Um, but so there are two, there's darker ones on the outside. And so that's how I know how to open it is like, there's a dark cause I flip flopped them. So it's dark, 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 dark. And I know that I need the dark one on the top left and the bottom right. And then I can go off that corner. So that's how I know. Cause I sat there for like 30 seconds trying to open the wrong one <laughs> one time. Uh, so let's see here. It moves actually pretty nicely now with the wax. Rory, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is. Oh, look at that. That's it. And these are just so crisp. Look at that, guys. They are like, I mean, like literally, I like draw Scott blood. Said, no. <laughs> I, I can draw blood with the uh, point there. Hey, we're an hour and 10 in. If anybody stayed this long, then, you know, you're getting the show. Um, <laughs> somebody, somebody said, which was really interesting. I hadn't thought of this. Somebody said, um, oh, that's really like two cutting boards. It is. And I was like, that's true. You could totally like take these apart. Let's just go ahead and do it. Like you could take these apart oh gosh, I feel like that. and use it as to take off your microphone. two cutting boards if you didn't have feet on one side. Um, and yeah, so that's the under, the, the biggest comment that I've gotten so far is why didn't I do any hidden storage? I mean, I would say it's an overwhelming oh, comment. Oh my gosh. I'm so aggravated. So here's, I'll tell you how aggravated, oh, you took it inside. I bought a knife specifically for this yes. to do that exact thing. And, um, to hide a knife in here. Right, that was the whole but plan. But if you can see, how can I hide it? Like, here's what people are thinking in their minds, and they're not thinking it through, is they're saying, oh, there's enough room to hollow out. Well, sure, if you hollow out the middle, but the dovetails have to go through. You can't just hollow out the middle. That and would then, be like, it would be like the tiniest little, little area. Well, no, I would have like to do it in here. In there or something. I would have to do it in here. Right, that's what I'm saying. I know, but what they're saying is like, oh, there's enough room in the middle. Oh, right. That so they're suggesting no that I like do out a whole thing, but because, the front still has to go through, so you can't do that. Um, 
So yeah, I actually was kind of bummed. I mean, I could put like a small, but it, I think that would just look stupid to have like a small like paring like knife in there. <laughs> no, you could just put like toothpicks. the little plastic, oh, could have toothpicks. the plastic sword that you get in a fancy drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that could be in yeah. there. That would fit. So we could do that, but that's like that people are just funny, crushing me in the comments about that, and I'm just like, I I was responding, and I'm just like, I'm not responding anymore to that. But uh, but yes, that's how it looks. That's how it works, and then it goes back together, um, pretty smoothly. Let's see here. My biggest concern is just with putting it together is uh, knocking off the, the sharp corners. Honey Taylor says, I was surprised there wasn't a recess cut inside to house a kitchen knife, mostly in the first board. And then like you pulled it apart and talked about it. He said, well, this comment didn't age well. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, Taylor. You're not alone, Taylor. No, no. But Taylor, um, I plan to go back and actually do one in the first board because uh, I wanted, uh, I think I put that in on the wrong side. No, I guess not. It looks good. I wanted to do that, and I think it would actually look really good. It, just, it was just a timing thing, quite honestly. Yeah. Because this one, oh, no, actually, I know what it was. So on this one, the difference Ooh. on this one, because I wanted to do that, is the size. So, uh, I, but I am going to put this back in the CNC and just cut it out just to appease people. Yeah. Um, but I may even make a new video that's like adding hidden storage, and I'll, I'll maybe do something. But uh, it's just the size. This is here. only, you know, this is only... Kind of whatever six inches seven inches um what could you put in there because i was going to do it this way on the other one and have a one huge one going across and that's how i was going to hide the knife but then i figured right. i wanted the three dovetails right that threw it all right. off and so, changed things. you know i've been enjoying the knife in the kitchen though you can only <laughs> you can only win so many yes <laughs> i'm just getting crushed by those I comments mean, man they're just relentless everyone had everyone had an opinion about that <laughs> comment didn't age everybody well. that's awesome all right, guys, we are going to get you. We, we stayed long, man. We did. Uh, we had a good time. Uh, so <laughs> thanks for all your thanks for all your yeah. comments, guys. And uh, I hope you guys did enjoy the video, which I'm sure yes. I'm sure you guys did. And we'll catch you guys next Sunday. Yeah, we'll be here. We won't have any projects done. I can no. guarantee you that. I don't, we will, but we'll probably know we what we're doing what for, we the, for the next video. Right. But our Hopefully. kids are going back all to school. All three kids are going to school tomorrow. All three kids are going to school for the first time. In nine months. In nine months. Yeah, it's crazy. So excited. I know. <laughs> so excited. Oh, geez. All right. So, so we're, we're going to go, I'm gonna go we're have gonna, like, another beer. To, yeah. Huh? She's going to go to bed. I'm going to have a beer. So yeah, anyway. I'm tired. Hope you guys have a great week. Yeah. Build something awesome this week, guys. See you next week. Bye. Bye.